All right. All right, everybody, getting the stream started. We're live on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to night 85 of coverage of the war in Ukraine. I'm your host, Andrew Mercado, here on Mercado Media. And thank you so much for choosing independent media as your source for the war in Ukraine. Australia to provide Ukraine with more armored vehicles. The Australian government is sending Ukraine 14 M113 armored personnel carriers and 20 Bushmaster protected mobility vehicles, Australian Defense Magazine reports. The country will also provide Ukraine with 60 pallets of medical supplies donated by Australian citizens, as well as three pallets of radiation monitoring equipment and some personal protective equipment. European Parliament approves suspending import duties on Ukraine's economy for one year. The measures will re remove important duties on Ukrainian industrial products along with entry duties on fruit and vegetables, anti-dumping duties, etc. From Ukraine intelligence, Russia fired upon top commanders for poor performance in Ukraine. According to the United Kingdom Defense Ministry, Russia has fired Sergei Kiesel, the commander of the elite First Guards tank army, for failing to capture Kharkiv. Vice Admiral Igor Opsipov, who commanded Russia's Black Sea Fleet, has also likely been suspended following the sinking of the flagship Moskva, the military did add. This will further strain Russia's centralized command and, mo and current model. And that Moskva ship was a huge loss. Huge loss. Ukrainian forces liberated 23 settlements in the Kharkiv Oblast within two weeks. Russian troops continue to shell Chernihiv and Sumy Oblast to divert our forces from the main directions, says Ukrainian General Oleksiy Gromov. Russians block civilians from leaving occupied areas in southern Ukraine. Russians have held over a thousand cars with people at their checkpoint in Vosklifa, Zaporizhia Oblast, and not allowing them to enter either Ukrainian-controlled territories, regional administration reports. G7 countries agreed to allocate $18.4 billion to Ukraine. The sum includes $9.2 billion from the United States, according to the draft document quoted by Reuters. The Senate approves $40 billion in aid to Ukraine and sends it to Biden. The Senate on May 19th gave financial approval to a $40 billion emergency military and humanitarian aid package for Ukraine. Finance Minister, Ukraine needs $5 billion per month to finance social and humanitarian aid. France Minister Sergei Machenko said on May 19th, G7 ministers should uh, excuse me, G7 finance ministers that frozen Russian assets should be used to rebuild Ukraine. From EU Secretary Jan Stoltenberg, Russia's offensive in Donbass is stalled, but war may continue for a long time. NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg said NATO doesn't believe that Russia has given up on its strategic goals and that NATO has to be prepared to support Ukraine, quote, for a long time. Biden authorizes $100 million more in military aid to Ukraine, a statement from Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Under a delegation from the President, I am authorizing our 10th drawdown of additional arms and equipment for Ukraine's defense from the United States Department of Defense inventories, valued it up to $100 million. This brings the total United States assistance to Ukraine to approximately 3.9 billion in arms and equipment to Russia since it launched its brutal and unprovoked full-scale invasion of Ukraine on the 24th of February. A Russian soldier who pleaded guilty to killing civilians asked for forgiveness. Vadim Shishmarin, 21 years old, the first Russian soldier standing trial in Ukraine for war crimes, has asked the wife of a Ukrainian civilian, for forgiveness we're going to be going through these stories we're going to be going through the latest combat footage of the day we're going to be going over the latest map updates all that and much more please like the video if you guys haven't spam those reactions make sure you're following mercado media on facebook make sure you're subscribed to the channel check into the stream comment where you guys are tuned in from and we'll be back after this short intro
everybody. How are you doing? How are you doing? Welcome to Mercado Media, another night of coverage, night 85 of the war in Ukraine. Again, I'm your host, Andrew Mercado. Whoa, what's going on there? There we go. Camera froze for a second, but we're back. We're good to go. Comment where you guys are tuned in from. Welcome again, Independent News Media. Let's go ahead and just get started on the latest in the conflict. If you guys want to look at the map, you guys can see here red is Russia blue Ukraine, so the red shaded areas of the map to the east in the Donbass, to the north Donbass region, to the south in the Crimean Peninsula is all going to be red. That is all Russian occupied territory. The dark red with the dark red line around it means that it's been occupied since 2014. Luhansk and Donetsk have been occupied since 2014, so it also has a darker line around it. All right, so I'm going to read off the latest per the per the Institute of, for the Study of War. So this is as of May 19th. Ukrainian military officials reported that some Russian troops have withdrawn from the Kharkiv city axis and have redeployed to the western Donetsk Oblast on May 19th. So that would be, up, let me see here. So they have a regrouping of troops uh, that are being pushed out from this liberated region in Kharkiv and then they're moving south to the Donetsk Oblast. That's down here. So they're being rerouted through to the very far east down to support their troops here in Donetsk on this line. The Ukrainian general staff said that 260 servicemen have withdrawn from the Kharkiv city axis arrived to replace significant combat losses at the 107th Motorized Rifle Battalion has taken approximately 20 kilometers southwest of Donetsk city. The Ukrainian military directorate intercepted a Russian serviceman's call suggesting that some 400 servicemen from the Kharkiv city axis who had arrived elsewhere in Donbass were shocked by the intensity of the fighting that were compared with what they had experienced from the Kharkiv Oblast. Russian forces are continuing to suffer shortages of reserve manpower, causing the Russian military command to consolidate depleted battalion tactical groups. An unnamed United States defense official reported that Russian forces have a 106 battle tactical groups, or excuse me, battalion tactical groups operating in Ukraine, but had to disband and combine some of them to compensate for losses. Ukrainian General Staff Main Operations Deputy Chief Oleksiy Gromov reported that Russian forces are combining units in the Pacific of, excuse me, units of the Pacific and Northern fleets at the permanent locations of the 40th Separate Marine Brigade and 200th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade, respectively. Gromov added that Russian forces are gaining servicemen in Krasnodar Krai to replenish units of the 49th Combined Arms Army and are trying to restore combat power of Russian units withdrawn from the battlefront in occupied Crimea. So a lot of a lot of unit consolidation. They're 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 moving they're moving their troops around, making sure that their their units are fully mission capable. FMC. Unknown Russian perpetrators conducted a series of Molotov cocktail attacks on Russian military com commissariats throughout the country in May, likely in protest of covert mobilization. Russian media and, so and local telegram channels reported deliberate acts of arson against military commissariats in three Moscow Oblast settlements. What is this exactly? I'm going to look up what this word means. Military commissariat. I don't know. I should have looked this up before. But... I want to know what the definition of that means. Is an institution that is part of a military service or law enforcement mechanism in some European countries. That's a military commissariat. A military commissariat, an institution that is part of a military service or law enforcement mechanism. The Soviet army, a modern Russian army, and some arm. Okay, got it. Continuing on. Russian media and local telegram channels reported deliberate acts of arson against military commissariats in three Moscow Oblast settlements, Omsk, Volograd, Razin Oblast, and Kanti Mansi Autonomous District between May 4th and May 18th. Ukrainian General Staff Main Operations Deputy Oleksiy Gromov said there were at least 12 cases of deliberate arson against military commissariats in total and five last week. Russian officials caught two 16-year-olds in the act in one Moscow Oblast settlement, which suggests that the Russian citizens are likely responsible for the attacks on these military commissariats, so they're like Eastern European military installations. 
So you have some you have some reports of some resistance in Moscow in the in the Moscow Oblast settlements of Omsk, Volograd, Ryazan Oblast, and Kanti Mansi Autonomous District. Here's some of the key takeaways. Russian forces are intensifying operations to advance north and west of Popazna in preparation for an offensive towards Severodonetsk. So let's take a look at that here. So we have Russian forces intensifying operations to advance north and west of Popazna in preparation for an offensive towards Severodonetsk. That's going to be a, an offensive to the northeast. So here's Popazna which the Wagner private military group seized a couple weeks ago, two, about two and a half weeks ago now at this point. And they're going to be pushing northeast towards Severodonetsk, which seven hours ago we have a strike, 12 civilians killed and 40 wounded as a result of a Russian shelling in Severodonetsk and the Luhansk region. Russian and proxy authorities in Mariupol are struggling to establish coherent administrative control of the city. That's interesting. Russian and proxy authorities in Mariupol likely facing, likely facing resistance. I mean, the citizens cer certainly don't want to be under Russian control. Struggling to establish coherent administrative control. Ukrainian servicemen left the territory of the Azovstal, 80 wounded among them. That's the latest update. Here's a video of the troops leaving. Another another batch of troops leaving the Azovstal plant in Mariupol. How's it going, Vitaly? Check in, everyone. Check in. These are the soldiers that are leaving that Azovstal plant in Mariupol, southeastern port city. Surrendered to Russian forces. Russian forces are bolstering their naval presence around Snake Island to fortify their grouping on the island. And Russian forces are reportedly attempted to regain control of the settlements they lost during the Ukrainian counteroffensive in Kharkiv City. So they reportedly made an attempt. Let's see, let's see the latest up here in Kharkiv. This is a really good resource using this Institute of War. We really get the, the direct breakdown of the movements of the day. One killed as a result of a Russian shelling in Kharkiv. Just have a picture right now. No video. Good evening, good evening. So picture in Kharkiv. And we have an air raid alarm. Okay. Let's continue on. I'm not seeing any updates in Kyrgyzstan. We had somebody ask nothing. There isn't any news updates from Kyrgyzstan at this time. More here. Uh, the, the Institute of War does not report on Russian war crimes because those activities are well covered in the media and do not directly affect military operations they're assessing and forecasting. Because they're, they are directly updating ground on-the-ground combat movements in Ukraine. The Institute of War has updated its assessment of the four primary efforts Russian forces are engaged in at this time. We have stopped coverage of supporting effort for Sumi in northeastern Ukraine because it's no longer an active effort. So this is what they have. The main effort is eastern Ukraine, comprised of one subordinate and three supporting efforts. The subordinate main effort, encirclement of Ukrainian troops in the cauldron between Izium and Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast. So that'd be in this area. That's in here. They gotta regain this this white space, or not regain, they gotta take this white space in the Donbass that they have not taken. Supporting effort two, Mariupol. Gain, est establish a, a government climate 
leadership control in there. They don't have one right now. Supporting effort number two, Kharkiv City. That's not going to, I mean, they're not. No, it's not happening in Kharkiv. They're already retaking territories and they're pushing the Russian forces back. There's, they're, they're liberating territories every day and there's already reports of Russian forces moving and regrouping to Donetsk from Kharkiv. So these are just the supporting efforts, not guaranteed that these are the efforts that they're going with. And then the southern axis, which is making sure Crimea, making sure the peninsula of Crimea stays protected. And they, again, this is for the Russian military. For the main effort in eastern Ukraine, subordinate main effort in southern Kharkiv, Donetsk, Luhansk, Oblast's Russian objective, encircle Ukrainian forces in eastern Ukraine and capture the entirety of Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast's, the claimed territory of Russia's proxies in Donbass. Russian forces unsuccessfully attempted to resume offensive operations in southwest Izium and did not advance in the Sloviansk and Lehman directions on May 19th. The Ukrainian general staff reported that Russian forces suffered significant losses and retreated after a failed attempt, excuse me, after a failed assault on Veklia Komolakushnovka, approximately 23 kilometers southwest of Izium. So here's the city of Izium, about 23 kilometers southwest. It's right here, north of, it'd be north of Donetsk and north, northwest of Luhansk, Izium, south of Kharkiv. Russian forces intensified efforts to advance north and west of Popozna in the direction for the Battle of Severodonetsk. Again, now we're, now that's update is over down here. This is all the updates in the Donbass. So Popozna to Severodonetsk. In preparation for the Battle of Severodonetsk, Ukrainian officials reported that Russian forces conducted several unsuccessful assaults and settlements leading to Lysyansk and Bakhmut highways near Popozna. The Luhansk People's Republic have claimed to have encircled Ukrainian troops in Zolot and Hirsk, approximately 12 and 14 kilometers northeast of Popozna. Let's get those two cities quick. So the LPR and the DNR are the two separatist military units. So they're they're basically just, even though they're different, they just call them Russia. <laughs> As I just call them Russia. So let's go to Hirsk. So it's south, just directly south of Severodonetsk. All right, it's the red marker on the map, right in between Donetsk and Luhansk and the Donbass. So we're gonna start getting to know some new cities and villages here. Russian forces also attempted to break Ukrainian defenses west and east of Advitka without any success and maintained heavy shelling in the area. They're also hitting that supply line, that crucial supply line that Ukraine's depending on from Severodonetsk to Oh no, what's the city? Oh near Oh ba Bakhmut. Thank you. I'm sorry. Bakhmut and Severodonetsk have a supply line and the Russian forces are continuing to shell it. So Ukraine is having difficulty in here at this time. Not being defeated, but there it's a it is a stalemate, but Russia is definitely hindering their ability for counteroffensives in this part of the Donbass. Russian troops have begun operating at a company scale rather than at the level of battalion tactical group to focus on seizing specific villages in Donbass, according to U.S. officials. An unnamed U.S. defense official also noted that Russian forces are still facing challenges in coordinating communication between commanders and synchronizing artillery fire and supporting ground assaults. Some military bloggers criticized the Russian reconnaissance strike complex due to its excessively centralized approval system for artillery fire. A pro-Russian military telegram channel criticized the current Russian strategy, claiming that Russian forces are hitting a, quote, st strategic dead end and are suffering significant losses trying to slowly capture small villages in different directions. Gulag. Supporting effort number one, Mariupol, Russian objective, capture Mariupol and reduce the Ukrainian defenders. Again, these are the Russian objectives to get an understanding of what they're doing here in Ukraine still, or what, what their goals are. Russian and proxy op occupation authorities in Mariupol reportedly struggled to establish coherent administrative control of the city on May 19th. So we're going down to Mariupol, southeastern port city. 
the soldiers have just left the Azovstal plant. Advisor to the mayor of Mariupol, Petro Andriyachenko, claimed that authorities in Mariupol who are collaborating with Russian occupiers do not report to the leadership of the Donetsk People's Republic and instead are being guided by the Russian Federal Service, the FSB. Andriyachenko, that's not good. Andriyachenko additionally stated that the Luhansk People's Republic will become the only, quote, independent political organ of Russia due to the way DNR officials are imposing their occupational agendas on Mariupol. Interesting. So there's a little bit of a divide there with the LNR and DNR with what's going on in Mariupol. Andriyachenko noted that the head of the DNR, Denis Pushlin, has commanded elements of the police corps currently stationed in Mariupol to move other areas in Donetsk and respond to riots caused by an internal struggle of political clans. They're struggling to get they're struggling to get hold of Mariupol. Struggling. While the, while the Institute of War cannot independently confirm Andriyachenko's claims, they are consistent with the overall lack of coherency in the implementation of occupation agendas by Russian and DNR authorities alike. Factional infighting between proxy authorities and Mariupol are likely being exasperated by the ongoing evacuation of Ukrainian defenders from the Azovstal steel plant. Pro-Russian telegram channels complain that Russian forces are removing wounded Russian servicemen from hospitals in the DNR to treat wounded Ukrainian soldiers who were recently evacuated from the Azovstal. If confirmed, these reports indicate a continued lack of consistency in the way Russian and proxy authorities are handling the evacuation of Ukrainian forces from Azovstal and the overall capture of Mariupol. Supporting effort number two, Kharkiv City, Russian objective, withdraw forces to the north and defend ground lines of communication. Let's go to Kharkiv. To the north, northeast Donbass. Russian forces focused on maintaining their positions north of Kharkiv City to prevent further Ukrainian advances on May 19th. The Ukrainian general staff noted that Russian troops conducted an unspecified and unsuccessful counterattacks in an attempt to restore lost positions around Kharkiv City. Deputy Chief on Main Operations Department of the Ukrainian General Staff Brigadier General Oleksiy Gromov reported that Ukrainian counteroffensive in northern Kharkiv Oblast has liberated 23 settlements since May 5th, but did not name them. Russian troops continued to conduct artillery strikes on Ukrainian positions and suburban settlements around Kharkiv City. And we have an update here from Channel 4 News here on YouTube about the Ukrainians retaking control of the Village, the, excuse me, from the villages and cities in Kharkiv. Like the video if you guys haven't. I will be sharing this video to our Discord server. Join our Discord server if you have not done so. Right from the ebb and flow of the conflict on the ground here, one of the big themes of the war over the last 48 hours has been efforts to hold Russia to account for war crimes and crimes of aggression. So, for example, in Kyiv today, the trial continues of a soldier, a Russian soldier, who has admitted to killing an unarmed civilian, and that man's widow confronted that Russian soldier in court. At an international level, the European Parliament has, uh, is going to support a resolution to set up a special tribunal that will investigate um, w crimes of aggression, which would bring it beyond the scope of the International Criminal Court. As for us, we've spent the last two days in a village just east of here. The word atrocity is a very big word, but here is what that means to people in a very small village. And I should stress, there are distressing images in our report. Five-year-old Veronica singing and cycling past the school in the village of Vilhivka. She was due to start at the school in September. She is, thankfully, oblivious to the bloated body of a Russian soldier lying in the grass in front of the school. On the 23rd of March, Russian forces took this village, 15 miles east of Kharkiv, Ukraine's second city. The school became the Russian command center. They held on to the village for about a week before Ukrainian troops pushed them out. 
This video from Ukrainian forces shows the offensive to take back the school. Exactly what happened in this village during that week may not ever make the history books, but it should. This is the first street you come to when you enter this village. And residents who used to live here told us that when the Russians were moving in, they took out every single residential house on the street. Now the school is another street over the HQ of the Russian operation and this will have been in the heat of the battle as the Ukrainians were trying to take it back. But you have to ask yourself, what was the point of taking out every single home? The name of this street, by the way, is Ukraine Street. If this is a country story on a street, then Nikita Shukrabin's story is that of this village. He would have been a star pupil at the school in his day. The young man, now 20, was studying law in Kharkiv before the war. Nikita was here. He was about 500 meters here, through the field. He went home and in the town of Sadika disappeared. On the 27th of March, he was visiting with his friend Andre in this building beside the school, which they both attended as children. At 3 p.m. that day, Nikita left to go home just across the field. It was the last time Andre saw his friend. What do you think, deep down, what do you think happened to him? И затянуть. Это единственный из вариантов, которые может. Потому что второй вариант может только быть хуже. Так, и очень давно нет ни, никаких известий, уже прошло два месяца. И как бы только это, надежда одна, что он еще жив, и э, ждем его дома. Вот так вот. This is where Nikita lived with his mother and father. Nikita's parents were taken to Russia under false pretenses on the 28th of March. Their son was not with them. 90 people from this village were taken by Russian soldiers across the border that day. At little Veronica's house, we met her mother and grandmother and Svetlana, a friend. Her father was one of the 90. С нашего поселка дошли до соседнего поселка пешком. Это где-то 5-6 километров. И были там около 90 человек. Там были люди старые, тоже в возрасте. Оттуда их забрали военные КАМАЗы. They were told they were being brought to another town in Ukraine, but at the border with Russia were transferred onto buses. That's when everyone realized they'd been lied to. Сказали им, что мы вас довезем до Волчанска, это наш украинский город, но оказалось не так. Их перевезли через... We should give you an idea then for the soldiers at the Azovstal plant. To ruin the, not to dampen the mood anymore, but I mean, this should just give you an idea of the fate for the Azovstal soldiers from Mariupol. Поселка, дошли до соседнего поселка пешком, это где-то 5-6 километров. И были там около 90 человек, там были люди старые, тоже в возрасте. Оттуда их забрали военные КАМАЗы. They were told they were being brought to another town in Ukraine, but at the border with Russia were transferred onto buses. That's when everyone realized they'd been lied to. Сказали им, что мы вас довезем до Волчанска, это наш украинский город, но оказалось не так. Их перевезли через границу к Белгороду. Svetlana's father didn't have his passport with him and is now stuck in Russia. Hey, yo, thank you, Tony. We spent two days in Velhivka. These just a handful of experiences. There are more. The two young men killed by artillery fire in the cemetery while they buried a friend. A child in the village who developed a speech impediment during the intense shelling. Just seven days of fighting in one village. That put Veronica's future on hold for now. <laughs> That put 20-year-old Nikita's future on hold for who knows how long.
A week is a very long time in a war. Warwick O'Brien there. That was a report from Channel 4 News on YouTube from the Kharkiv Oblast and the supporting effort number two that Russian forces have attempted. If you look at the map, it's, I mean, there's even there's been 23 territories have been liberated from Ukra by Ukrainian forces. We have seven hours ago, direction battles, so they're fighting over the remaining territories right now. And if you guys stick around here, coming up soon, when we get to our combat footage, we have the Dirty Dozen Volunteer Group. We have another, another combat video, it's about four minutes long, of more villages being liberated. I'm wondering if we're going to get any more of that special forces group up here in Kharkiv that continue to liberate these villages. All right, let's go to supporting effort number three, which would be the Southern Axis, and that is defending Kyrgyzstan against Ukrainian counterattacks. So here's Kyrgyzstan, between Kyrgyzstan and Mykolaiv. The dark blue, these, the shaded region on the map is liberated territories. Russian forces did not make any confirmed advances on the Southern Axis and shelled along the front line on May 19th. Russian forces conducted artillery attacks against Kyrgyzstan Zaporizhia, which is over here. So here's Kyrgyzstan, Zaporizhia, Dnipro, Travetsk, that's Dnipro, and Mykolaiv Oblasts, Mykolaiv, to the north, to the northwest of Kyrgyzstan. Unidentified partisans reportedly blew up a Russian armored train in Melitopol and damaged two railway tracks and a locomotive with 10 fuel tanks. It's their big up armored uh, tank, or excuse me, a tank train that they, I mean, we watched videos early on in the invasion of them bringing it in and Ukrainian soldiers blew it up. Russian forces are continuing to fortify the grouping on, on the regrouping on Snake Island with two warship detachments and cruise missiles. The situation in Transnistria remains unchanged. So that's Transnistria. And the, uh, Russia recognizes this, and apparently the rest of the world does not. So it's just highlighted on our map. So when you guys hear the words Transnistria or the Transnistrian region here in Moldova, that's this breakaway region here that has been pro-Russian separatist since 1992. Immediate items to watch. Russian forces will likely complete their withdrawal in the vicinity of the Kharkiv Oblast, but attempt to hold a line west of Volvachansk to defend their Glocks from Belgrade to Izium. It is unclear if they will succeed. The Russians will continue to encircle Severodonetsk and Lichansk, at least from the south, possibly focusing on cutting off the last highway connecting Severodonetsk and Lichansk with the rest of Ukraine. So, immediate items to watch, Russian forces continuing to withdraw from the vicinity of Kharkiv city. It's northeastern, northeastern city in Ukraine in the Donbass. And then the Russians will continue to encircle Severodonetsk and Lishansk, because that's down here. At least from the south, by possibly by focusing on cutting off the last highway connecting Severodonetsk and Lishansk with the rest of Ukraine. All right, and that is the daily military movements on the map. That is the map. The map updates and changes. Now let's go to this, and I wanted to touch on this. Uh, Russia uses a new laser weapon in Ukraine. As Zelensky mocks it as a quote wonder weapon. From London, Russia on Wednesday said it was using a new generation of powerful lasers in Ukraine to burn up drones, deploying some of Moscow's secret weapons to counter a flood of Western arms. We had seen a man-made, we had seen a man-made one ye uh, yesterday. A Russian soldier had an interesting-looking weapon that takes down drones. Pre Russian President Vladimir Putin in 2018 unveiled an intercontinental ballistic missile, underwater nuclear drones, a supersonic weapon, and laser weapon. Little is known about the specifics of the new laser. Putin mentioned one called Persevet, named after the medical, excuse me, the medieval Orthodox warrior monk Alexander Persevet, who perished in mortal combat. 
Here that is on a video. So Russia threatens to incinerate drones and, quote, blind Western satellites with these laser cannons. So you're going to see a video of that and then President Vladimir Zelensky's response to these space lasers. Excuse me. Uh, are these the space lasers? These are the space lasers, aren't they? I think we found them, Chad. We finally found the space lasers. Выполнение боевой задачи. Приступить. So, and then let's look at President Vladimir Zelensky's response to that. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said Russia's announcement of a new laser weapon showed the, quote, complete failure of its invasion. The occupiers allegedly began to use laser weapon systems in Ukraine. По-перше, звертає на себе увагу той факт, що їм знадобили allegedly to save missiles економити ракети і якось це First, the fact that they have to save on missiles and somehow explain it attracts attention. Пояснювати. Тобто, більш ніж дві тисячі ракет, які That is, more than 2,000 missiles fired by the Russian army in Ukraine. Російська армія випустила по Україні, були основною частиною were the main part of their stock of missiles. Їхнього запасу ракет. Що ж, пропаганді на це... In the propaganda of Nazi Germany, there was such a term as the Wunderwaffe. <laughs> oh my god, it's true, man. Oh my god. В Сиської Німеччині був такий термін Wunderwaffe. Чудо зброї. The Wonder Weapon. The clear... I'm la just Call of Duty. That's why I'm... Chuckling. The clear it became that they had no chance in the war. The more propaganda there was about this amazing weapon. There would be, that would be so powerful as to ensure a turning point in the war. Zelensky is smart. And we see that in the third month of a full-scale war. Russia is trying to find its Wunderwaffe, allegedly laser weapons. Wunderwaffe. Nibuto laser. This is all this all clearly indicates the complete failure of the invasion. But again, this shows that they are afraid to admit. That catastrophic mistakes have been made at the highest state military levels in Russia. That's from Zelensky. So. Some uh, comparisons to Nazi Germany when they declared they had a, quote, w a wonder weapon to use. So here is the latest news, too. If you haven't seen it, for Finland and Sweden submitting formal applications to join NATO. And we have a, a statement from the President of the United States afterwards to watch. All right, ready? Let's go. Finland and Sweden and Wednesday formally applied to join NATO, marking one of the most significant changes in European security in decades. The Finnish and Swedish ambassadors to NATO handed over an application letter to Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg. The applications you have made today are an historic step. Allies will now consider the next steps on their path to NATO. The security interests of all allies have to be taken into account. And we are determined to work through all issues and reach rapid conclusions. Okay, that's from Jan Stoltenberg. Now, here is the latest from President Biden. 
Finland and Sweden have quote full support for or excuse me full U.S. support for NATO. Per Biden, here's his own words: strong democratic institutions, strong militaries, and strong and transparent economies, and a strong moral sense of what is right. They meet every NATO requirement, and then some. And having two new NATO members in the high north will enhance the security of our alliance and deepen our security cooperation across the board. Today, the President, the Prime Minister, and I had a very good discussion about NATO accession, about the war in Ukraine, and strengthening transatlantic security. But our conversations began well before today. President Anisto and I spoke last December, and again in January, and the weeks leading up to Russia's unjust and unprovoked assault on Ukraine. In March, the President came to the White House, came to the White House to see me, to discuss this brutal conflict and the rupture it's causing in Europe. While we were in the Oval Office together, we picked up the phone and we called the Prime Minister. And the three of us all spoke. And we spoke again last week when I invited them to come to the White House today. We have consulted closely at every stage as Sweden and Finland made their, de their determinations. And today, I am proud to assure them that they have the full, total, complete backing of the United States of America. America. Today, my administration is submitting to the United States Congress reports on NATO accession for both countries so the Senate can efficiently and quickly move on advising and consenting to the treaty. I greatly appreciate Senator Schumer and McConnell's support, as well as Senator Menendez and Risch, to move this through the Senate as quickly as possible once the perspective of all allies are addressed and NATO adopts the accession protocols. The bottom line is simple, quite straightforward. Finland and Sweden make NATO stronger, not just because of their capacity, but their strong, strong democracies. And a strong, united NATO is the foundation of America's security. All right. So that's President Biden speaking. Uh, President Biden on May 19th gave Finland and Sweden the complete backing of the United States for their uh, application to NATO. So that was President Biden speaking in his own words. All right, now here we're going to get into some of the combat footage and clips from the Discord server. And I found this one. Dirty Dozen Volunteer Group Engage Russian Forces in Europe. And shout out to Funker530 for hosting this website and all of these, all of these clips compiling them. So... This is the Dirty Dozen Volunteer Group to engage Russian forces. So we're going to be going over some combat footage. If you guys haven't, comment if you're a veteran in our chat. If you've ever served in the armed forces, I mean, I, I did. I served. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. I was four years active duty, four years in the reserves, one tour to the Middle East. So, I mean, as much as I am doing the news, I, I have some experience in the military. I'm not a, I'm not a grunt or I didn't have a combat job. However, I was trained in... I was trained in convoy convoy security, you know, how to protect a convoy, how to protect a convoy element, how to drive at a convoy element, how to call a nine line medevac, you know, how to do all that stuff. I had, we had to be trained for it, but I never got to, I never experienced it. So that's just the best way to put it. I was an 88 Mike. So shout out to our amazing veteran community. Again, here we go. Viewer discretion advised from this point forward. This is in the easium direction. Excuse me, Erpen. Erpen. I forgot that I got the eye wrong. This is Erpen. Yeah, everyone's okay, fucking barely. Two BMPs. Yeah, I know. Alright. Not two, five. Okay. Where is he? He's about in Shin. Where? Was he with you? He was with you. Limon, Limon, yes, I'm on the Pion. That's that guy said that was friendly BMP. Yeah, he pulled back. He pulled back. Was that a rocket? Huh? Did it 
Coming our way? Incoming? This is an urban. Like some Americans too were talking. This is in the city of Irpin, so I'll show you where it is quick before we hop back in. This is when the Russians were near Kiev. Satellite city of Irpin and Bucha. Bucha is where one of the, the mass graves were. Dirty dozen volunteer group engage Russian forces near Irpin. <laughs> Американцы, да? Что справа? Это техника стреляет. Техника это. Бля, техника стреляет. Я yeah, сагаюсь. So Yeah, put this on your shoulder. Run straight. Ready? Yep. That's an American. <clears throat> Get over here. BMP! BMP! Straight in front of you. There's straight in front of you. There's armor up there somewhere too. Oh, we see the armor. Oh, we saw the armor. That machine gun fires. Keep moving to me. I'll cover you. Commander's over here. Hey, move to the commander. Move to the commander. Come to me. I'll cover you guys. Go. Hey, just go down. Go down. Go. Oh, go. I don't even know where the fuck they're at. All right, boys. Ready? Lay it down. Go, go. Who else is over here? Who else is over here? Go, go. This way. <sighs> Sounds like this unit's running point. Should I go through the building? Break through the building. What's up, Umberto? Oh, 
So this is the volunteer force. Early in the war, is some of the pictures in the beginning. If you just started tuning in, I'll play it again. Here. Again, credit to Funker Five Thirty for compiling this video and posting it. This is an ERP in Ukraine from March, showing some of the volunteer fighters. You can clearly hear there's some Americans. I heard some British in there. Some British soldiers. We're not gonna watch the whole thing again. He was with you. Do you see them? I have, that's the IR flag, American IR flag. American flag on the back of that. These are they got the yellow bands on. This is some of the volunteers. Is that a rocket? Another United States uh, flag, IR flag, infrared. Another one on this. This must be all a bunch of Americans here. Coming our way? Incoming? Another one here. United States Army, or excuse me, U.S. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> the U.S. flag, the IR flag. No, they really had. I'm, I don't know. I can't speak if there's United States Special Forces. Uh, likely, I don't know. I don't know. But this, they really did have volunteers go. The biggest one to ask was as a Twitter account. He posts on Twitter often. He's American. There really is for real, like like Americans that are fighting Russia in the volunteer units. Americans, I don't know what language that was. Is that you? He's got an American flag on that shoulder. No, he's, he's, that's Ukrainian he's speaking, correct? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. This is that yeah, that's our guys. Yeah, see him. All right, then they run across the street from here, the Americans. All right, now let's go to from Elia. Combat troops are back to a rear shelter after a combat shift. War or no war, dinner has to be on time. It's been the same for eight years anywhere in the war zone. That was in Irpin, Eileen. That was in the city of Irpin. Making meals out of MREs. They're, they're dumping MREs into bowls. Who was an MRE chef in your unit? MREs taste good. All right, next let's get to this update here. Here we watched this like a, I'd say a month or two ago. But this is some of the aid that's getting to Ukraine. There's going to be a bunch, uh, another group of Bushmaster vehicles from Australia being sent there. I just wanted to update you guys on that vehicle. So this is being sent from Australia. Another batch of Bushmasters. 
Bushmaster is an 11 tonne 4x4 protected vehicle. It's designed to provide battlefield mobility to up to 10 soldiers by providing the mine blast protection and ballistic protection. The vehicle is armoured from the toe to the tail and has a deep V underbelly that is providing mine blast protection and deflecting the blast of a landmine or an IED away from the soldier. The vehicle is ballistically protected all over from small arms and machine gun fire and it provides high levels of cross-country mobility with a powerful drive line, six-speed transmission, independent suspension with central tyre inflation, allowing the vehicle to cross rough terrain and travel long distances. So this vehicle, weighing in about 11 tonnes with a four-ton payload, is different from most of the other products out there because this was designed as a fighting vehicle from the outside. It's built like an armoured vehicle. This is not a box on a truck like an MRAP with a commercial driveline. This vehicle was designed as an off-road and military vehicle from the very day it was designed. So it has a fully protected driveline, so it is less vulnerable to going off off-road, it's less vulnerable to battle fire. Uh, it has more efficient use of space to provide more room for the soldiers in the vehicle and has more payload to carry more armour, more weapons and more equipment for long range mission profiles. It is interesting they have that on the outside of the vehicle. The Bushmaster has been a global success for us. We have over 1,100 vehicles delivered and in service. They're in service with the Australian Army, the British, the Dutch, the Japanese, the Jamaicans and the Indonesian Army. They're used by both Green Army and the Special Force units with these organisations in a variety of roles, from troop carrying to commander control ambulance, recovery and repair and a myriad of other functions on the battlefield to support armies around the world doing their operations. The vehicles have had operational service in Iraq, Afghanistan and now most recently in Mali where they've met army's needs. And now whether Ukraine. Whether it's been the Dutch or the Australians or you know in future customers the ability to provide that protection to soldiers and keep them safe from harm. Effectively, it's an amazing vehicle for the Australian Army. Uh, we've used it also in training back home. I guess the, the three key things we've seen is obviously the amazing protection that it offers, including when I was blown up by an IED. Uh, secondly, the communication suite that's in it has enabled a lot of... All of these vehicles, these MRAPs, they have what's called a V-shaped hull. So underneath the vehicle, there, the, there is a, a V-shaped underneath. So if there's a blast, like an IED blast, it blasts outward instead of up into the truck. So like the old vehicles of the old days before these MRAP systems came out, they were flat on the bottom. When you hit an IED, the whole truck would blow up or go flying. Now the, the blast is designed so it will blow outwards and, and take out just the wheels and not damage or not uh, kill the crew that's in the vehicle. Command functions and also it's amazing operational uh, mobility, which has been very good. I guess the two other key takeaways is something that we continue to use the vehicle in a range of roles and has broad utility. And I guess adaptability as well. All our lessons that we learn on from the vehicle, we keep working with Talos in partnership to ensure that we get a better product and build a better operational outcome, which is very good. Vehicles you can trust with your life. So these are the Bushmaster vehicles that Australia sending more of them. No, there, there won't be any cope cages on these. These are these are well designed. Oh, that's the Bushmaster vehicle. That's what is being sent 
to Ukraine, more of them. So here now we have a video that sent to our Discord server. Ukrainian medic chronicled her work in Mariupol before being captured by Russians. So we're done. We're going back down here to the southern east southeastern port city of Mariupol with a, 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 a medic chronicled her work. She had a, a dash cam or not a dash cam, a helmet cam, GoPro. And uh, and the, they were able to retrieve the footage. So here we go. He celebrated Ukrainian medic using a body camera and a memory card recorded over two grueling weeks of her experiences working in Mariupol. Yulia Paiska, known as Tyra, handed the video to an Associated Press team as it left Mariupol in a humanitarian convoy on March 15th. The next day, Paiska was detained by Russian soldiers. She is among hundreds of prominent Ukrainians who have been kidnapped or captured. Russia has betrayed her as working for the nationalist Azov Battalion, but her video shows her trying to save Rus Russia soldiers as well as Ukrainian civilians. <laughs> Ладно, командир. Где болит солнышко? Видим, откидываю. Ножки. Руку, руку, руку. Ukraine's government has said they had tried to add the medic's name to a prisoner exchange weeks ago, but Russia denies holding her. This despite her appearance on television networks in the Donetsk separatist region and on the Russian NTV network. So that is the Ukrainian medic chronicled her work in Mariupol before being captured. Another video sent to our Discord server. Reporters come under heavy fire in occupied eastern Ukraine. It appears they're embedded with Russian soldiers here. So, uh, reporters with Russian soldiers come under heavy fire. <laughs> Dang, that landed right on him. Bro. Make your propaganda film somewhere else. Dang. Make your videos somewhere else. That was close. Look at that. That would have taken out this whole team if they would have kept. If that, they would have made it a little further. How far? Ended right here in the street. Ну это вот осколок той самой мины, которая приземлилась неподалеку от НАТО. This dude's been in other videos before. This guy. He's been in other 
combat videos from them. We got their vlogging camera out there, ready to go to make their propaganda videos. Alright, let's get into the war clips of the day from Rob Lee. UAV footage of a Russian artillery strike on Ukrainian positions in the Lehman area. Like the video if y'all haven't. It's looking like this is a this this time frame is an L for me. About three hundred less people on YouTube and Facebook is in double digits. So I might have to just go back to the normal time. Like the video, y'all. Or I might go eight p.m. to ten p.m. All I know is two hours earlier, we have about 300 less viewers. <laughs> I just needed more time at night to get my work done. I just have to fit that in before the 9 p.m. stream. Thank you, Nora. All right. Russian Spetsnaz and Shreya Balka in the Kirsten Oblast. Just a picture. We got a captured Russian MSTSA howitzer. That's the howitzer that can fire, uh, fire direct. It can do direct fire and it has artillery or artillery barrage capability. Next video. A DNR strike on a Ukrainian position in the Advitka area. Possibly an ATGM. You got a trench system. See the soldier in the trench system here on the bottom of the screen. DNR strike. So the Donetsk, uh, the Donetsk Republic separatists on a Ukrainian position. I missed that guy. <clears throat> he walked away. A Ukrainian UAV dropping munitions on a Russian armored vehicle. Mark, thank you so much for the like. Ukrainian UAV dropping munitions on Russian armored vehicle. Machine gunner from the 61st Naval Infantry Brigade in a def... Oh, here we go. More, more video. Start here. I'll just start here fresh with all three of them. Video of servicemen from the Northern Fleet 61st Naval Infantry Brigade jerry-rigging a UAV to carry a RGD-5 grenade. <laughs> Немцев, как ребята опять же шутят, которые засели там в окопах, пришла почти мгновенно. Братиш, расскажи, что это за ноу-хау. Так, ну это не ноу-хау, это уже как бы давно запатентованное. Тут смысл в чем? Система сброса присутствует. И также гранаты. Единственное, что мы добавили, это шприц в системе сброса. То есть это у вас укол называется, я так понимаю. Сделать ну, укол. Наподобие. Он сейчас кольцо вытаскивает. Не надо вот. И удар над ЗРГ, он вот сюда вставляет. И там он сейчас он примерно и покажет это. Довольно экстремальное занятие, я так понимаю. Ну вот расскажи, вот сейчас самая интригующая часть, я так понимаю. Ну вот он кольцо вытаскивает, одевает туда иглу. Из-под обычного шприца, да? да? 
Все. Вот эту ниточку он сейчас на систему сбросил. Подцепляет. Лекарство готово, да, для неонацистов? Теперь он вставляет туда шприц, вытаскивает иголку. Alright, second video. I'm going to poll in the chat too for best time that works for you to tune in. Video of members of the 61st Naval Infantry Brigade taking over from Grad MLRS fire near Advidka. Это не мы. Пилот, пилот, а телек прием. Давай туда назад в окоп пока. Я телек, да, по мне городы. Еще. Все хорошо, все нормально, сейчас будем драться. Они по своим откуда. All right, and then here's the newest one from today, all in a sequence. Machine gunner from the 61st Naval Infantry Brigade in the defensive position. Крайние дни они периодически постреливают в эту сторону. Выходить вроде пока не пробовали, так прощупывают, видимо. Но мы отстреливаемся. Ну, то есть в ответ поражаете огневые точки, правильно? Да, да, да. Я стараюсь ну, выждать момент, выслушать, с каких точек они ведут огонь. И уже потом относительно прицельно вести огонь в ответ. По своему сектору. Ну, удачи тебе, братишка. Спасибо. Хочешь кого-то привет передать? Да всем, кто меня знает и видит, всем привет. Все будет хорошо, победа за нами. Смотрю, ты здесь, да, на пулемете несешь дежурство постоянно. Расскажи, боевики часто пытаются выходить, прощупывать. Как часто огонь приходится вести? Ну, крайние дни они периодически... Выходить вроде пока не пробовали. Так прощупывают, видимо. Ну, мы отстреливаемся. Ну, то есть в ответ поражаете огневые точки, правильно? Да, да, да. Я стараюсь ну, выждать момент, выслушать, с каких точек они ведут огонь. И уже потом относительно прицельно вести огонь в ответ. По своему сектору. Ну, удачи тебе, братишка. Спасибо. Хочешь кого-то привет передать? Да всем, кто меня знает и видит, всем привет. It looks like he's waiting for action. It looks like it. That's the way they set up their their videos. Here's a UAV video. Oh, we're gonna get to that. Oh, we'll get to that. Here it is. Here, UAV of the Northern Fleet, 61st Naval Infantry Brigade, dropping grenades on Ukrainian positions. Hey y'all, if you could vote in my chat really quick, vote. Let me know what time at night works best for you for the live stream. It's either start starting time at 7 p.m. Starting time at 8 p.m. or starting time at 9 p.m. And that is central time. I live in Minnesota, so I'm based on central time. I have been streaming from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. And that time frame just doesn't work well for me personally. I mean, I can make it work, but that time, it doesn't allow for me to get anything done at night that I need to. So let me know in the chat what works best for you, and I will adjust. We're about under, a little under 300 viewers than we usually are at this time, so... I do want to adjust it to make it work.
There is an anytime option as well. If anytime works for you, that's okay as well. A captured Russian 2S3 Ak 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 Akatsia howitzer. Um, Samochodna howitzer 2S3 Akatsia. Akatsia. Russian occupants in panic killed after they were killed. Украинские воины с их позиций в Харьковской области. Теперь будет бить по россиянах. Боекомплект на месте. Машина в чудовом стане. Так что ждите подарки. Все российские оккупанты будут уничтожены. И в Украине не остается жодного. А мы это сделаем даже российской зброей. Moving on here, that's that howitzer we've seen used in Mariupol. We've seen training videos with it. Video of Ukrainian paratroopers striking a Russian armored vehicle, possibly a BTR with an anti-tank weapon. You can see the targets right here. To the, bot to the bottom portion of your screen. and the subsequent explosion from the tank. Can you guys see the, see the targets? Or the, I don't know, are they targets? Ukrainian paratroopers striking a Russian armored vehicle. This has to be at nighttime. Had to have been a nighttime operation. One more time on that. Ukraine has these ability, has the capability to operate at night. Russia does not. Moving on to our next clip, or our next, here you go. A Russian Cam AZ truck ready for this. <laughs> He's even roasting him now. Dang, Rob, you were the last. <laughs> Everyone's roasting him. Even the, even the, even Rob Lee is now. Lynette, thank you for the $2 super chat. God dang, boy. God dang. You got the passenger can see. Passenger has ability to look out the window. What do they got? What do they, what do they add here? What are some of the add-ons we see? This is like well, a Where's Waldo picture. The more you look, the more you see. Is that a pillow? That is a pillow. The more you look, the more... They have a pillow up there. How effective will that be? I think they got a, a bulletproof pillow. Some Kevlar in it. A couple, a couple wood logs here. Got a hook. I don't know where they found that. These look like cords holding the, like actual electrical cords holding the pieces of wood together. This looks like a, this looks like an air conditioning vent. A vent to an air conditioner. It's plugged in. And I can't believe they have a pillow up there. That's new. Oh, that's a pillow. Oh, I looked closer. Oh, that's a pillow. See the comments. Oh, here, here it is. Zoom. Oh. Is that bigger? There, there's a bigger picture of it. I know. Level one starter armor. <laughs> Nice addition to my collection. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is 
that one's my favorite up here with all the wood logs on the front. But the but they still spray painted a V in the log. All right, combat pillow. Interesting. Old footage of a Russian Spetsnaz near the Azov stole. Hey Gary, $13.13, 13 cents, 13, 13, thank you. We had that Star Wars game never. Talking about the all right, my, the the uh, the R. All right, there you go. If you guys have, if you guys want to be able to rewind on YouTube, let me know if I forget. The R's on. Refresh your video. Hubby. Sometimes I turn it off because it does mess up the stream at times. Try to turn. It the video of the leader of the Chechen Akhmet unit with a captured AT-4 from the Severodonetsk front. Байдену особенное спасибо за то, что он постоянно оснащает нас вот таким вот вооружением. Да? Да. Вот и Вообще, хороший грамм. Чтобы они оставляли его нам. Хороший грамм. И уходили. Этот? Ну, ты знаешь, в принципе, можно его назвать хорошим гранатометом, но не супер. Прямо, прямо. Что... Refresh your video, like close out of the live stream on YouTube and go back in and see if the deep... It should work. Thanks, Legend, for fixing the settings. Oh, of course. Hello from Australia. Love your work. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Other details on that? Video of the Chechen Akhmet unit, the AT4. Guy on the right has starter PUBG armor. The Chechen, why do the Chechens get the best stuff? Is there a reason? Has there been established why the Chechen units get like high speed equipment? And then the actual like Russian military looks like PUBG beginners. Don't forget the like, thank you, cult member. Video reportedly of a Russian Tor air defense system shooting down a UAV. Not even using half of the they're not even using like the sites that they get put on or the attachments they're blind they blind fire all the time russian orlin 10 uav footage of russian artillery strikes on ukrainian position But the lasers. <laughs> I 
The only wonder weapon I've seen is that dude, that one Russian guy who was so proud of himself shooting down that little shooting down the little UAV. He was so proud. But he had some. He had a he had a wonder weapon yesterday, fresh out of the box. This guy had radio. What what would it be? Microwave. Video wave can emit, disable a UAV. More crowdfunded equipment being sent to Russian rotary wing units and forward air controllers, including DJI Mavic 2 UAVs. They're requesting Mavic 3s. Satcom phones, large razor. Who's sending these to? Oakley gloves? The crowdfunding? Damn. Imagine being in the actual mil Imagine having to be in the military. Imagine having to serve your country and crowdfunding for equipment. That's tough. I mean, we went through budget cuts under Obama. Damn. Where can I find the picture of the messed up Russian junk all over the internet? <laughs> Are you specific? Are you talking about the coke cages? Right, I'll share that really quick. Got you. Share a tweet. Copy link. All right, I'll share that to our Discord server. Got a crowdfund for you. They're getting the Mavic two, Mavic UAVs. I want the Mavic three for recording. Eli La Seti, a ten dollars super chat. Thank you so much. Here we are with a DNR tank firing on a Ukrainian position in the obstacle. Share this server really quick. Join our Discord server if you have not done so. Link is in the description. In our tank firing on firing on a Ukrainian position in the obstacle plant. Could have been more specific. Imagine being the self. Imagine being the second most powerful military in the world, and needing to crowdfund your army. Ukraine's military is not on the same level in terms of personnel. They're on a higher level in terms of skill. Without the private military groups, who knows if Russia would have any, captured any cities. Without the Chechens. Audio is in and out. There's no audio on this one. There's audio in and out on my... Oh, how's that? My audio is in and out. How's that? Is that a little better? Thank you for updating me. One more time. So this is inside the Azovstal plant, Mariupol. Appreciate that chat. You can see the vehicle to the bottom of your screen. Tank combat.
another tank to the bottom of your screen. All good from the United Kingdom. You see troops moving here into the building. I'm going to rewind just a little bit. We got to really look all over to see everything going on in some of these UAV videos. But watch the troops on the bottom of the screen enter the building. See them move in. That was a big battle in there. DNR firing on a Ukrainian position in Azovstal. A captured Russian Strela 10M3 air defense system in Ukrainian service. It's got the Ukrainian yellow on it. Modification. So again, one more time on this. This is a Russian Strela 10 M3 air defense system. Let's see what that is, actually. I don't think we've looked up that. This sounds new. Sounds like a new piece or a piece of equipment we haven't looked up. Army's power. What the hell? I think it sounds like lasers. The way it shoots, you guys get... So it's got two in each pod. So, Ukraine got one of them. Here it is in the video. M3, номер 568, захоплена воїнами 92-ї бригади. Тепер вона перефарбована. Тепер ця стріла 10М3 знаходиться вже на озброєнні Збройних сил України. Модифікація so some background, this piece of equipment entered the Soviet Army in 1981. The Strela 10 M3 is a further development of the system. It can additionally engage UAVs and cruise missiles. Missiles have improved resistance to enemy countermeasures. The Strela M improved air defense missile system entered service with the Soviet Army in 1979. It has missile improved guidance. It distinguishes targets from infrared decoys. Therefore, it is more effective. 
M3. It entered service with the Soviet Army in 1976. The baseline version is referred to the Strela 10 SV. Reporting name in the West is an SA-13 Gopher. It has been widely exported to Soviet allies, including Angola, Cuba, Czechoslovakia, India, Jordan, Libya, North Korea, Poland, Syria, Serbia, Slovakia, Yemen, and other countries. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, these air defense systems were passed on to successor states. As of 2012, Russia operates over 400 Strela 10 systems. The other operators are Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Georgia, Turkmenistan, and Ukraine. That is the Russia Strela 10 M3, which the M3, again, is a further development of the, the, the M. It can additionally engage UAVs and cruise missiles, so that'll help. That'll definitely be a, a tool for Ukraine to use for their air defenses. Russian T-80 BVM tank on fire after being targeted by Ukraine's 54th Mechanized Brigade. Like the video if y'all haven't, hit that like button, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you are following the page. Daily Ukraine war coverage minus Friday nights. Tomorrow we'll be live with the war coverage at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, so usually when the afternoon session for the Johnny Depp trial would begin. That's when we'll be doing war coverage. Low-flying Russian Mi-28N attack helicopter. Okay. Got it in some slow motion today. Got a slow motion Mi 28N attack helicopter. I know, right? The poll results sure don't help, do they? <laughs> Here we go with a captured R16605 communications vehicle. Another captured vehicle for the U for Ukraine. <laughs> Yep, the Facebook. I don't want Facebook to be. I'm annoyed every time. Every video gets restored. I know how to fight them. Can't tell if it has cagery on it. Does it have some cope cagery on there? Or is that just part of the vehicle? Looks to uh, looks to be some cagery. All right. Video reportedly video of a Russian 2S7 Pion artillery strikes on Ukrainian positions filmed by DNR Spetsnaz. Oops. It's looking like the 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. slot might be the winner, though. Aloha, Andrew. Thank you so much. Grab your subscriber badge on Facebook. Grab the badge next to your name in the chat.
So Russian 2S7 Pion artillery strikes on Ukrainian positions filmed by Donetsk People Republic Spetsnaz. A Russian BTR indirect fire on Ukrainian positions in Pisky. We'll look up where Pisky is. like a flat gun. I'm gonna look this up quick. In indirect fire, for real. That's what I was, that's what I'm wondering. No, in indirect fire mode? We've seen these BTRs used all the time, but why is it, is it lobbing rounds or what? Every round expended mist. The Russian advanced. I fart in your general direction. Literally, it's in indirect fire. That's usually a, that's usually a vehicle or a weapon system that you fire direct. This is usually something you engage, this vehicle, this weapon system, you engage directly with. It's a little odd to be seeing indirect fire. Where's Pisky? Just lobbing some rounds, huh? Can't be in Kiev. There we go. Donetsk, right on the city outskirts, to the northwest of the city. There's the red marker. One more time. Random fire into the sky, could be. Maybe this is just for a video, too. We got a soldier standing here in the road, watching it. So I don't know if it's it's clearly not being engaged because dude's standing there. Could be just made for the videos. Just made for the internets. As a lot of Russian, a lot of Russian videos are made for the interweb. Dude standing still here, hands down in his pockets. Lobbing rounds out there. Lobbing them. Here's a Russia Strela. There's the 10 M3. Here it is. The the same exact variant that Ukraine seized. Not the same vehicle per se, but this is what it looks like. Video of DNR fighters in Edvidka. Here, let's look that up really quick so you get an idea of where this is. On our map, comment where you're tuned in from, what city, what state, where in the world you guys are watching from. Welcome to Mercado Media. Also north of Donetsk, in the Donbass. Also north of Donetsk.
Да, да. Убас, кумпыл, убас, убас, идет все. Есть, есть, бать. Уходим, давай. Есть, да. Без, без, на базу, на базу. One more time on that. So these are the, this is the Donetsk separatists. That separatist unit, DNR fighters. Hey, how we doing, Sacramento? Who we got tuned in here? Clearmont, Florida, Canada, Minneapolis, Long Island, New York, Great State of Texas, Casper, Wyoming, Charlotte, New North Carolina, West Virginia, Parkersburg, South California, North Carolina, Faro Islands, Sacramento. We got who we got here? Portland, Oregon. Aloha from the Pacific. Carson, Washington, Chico, California, Richland, Washington. All right, next clip. Video of Ukrainian Stugna P ATGM strike on a Russian BTR. Direct hit right on it. Dang, they're getting they're getting really good with tracking that and following it with the. They they've been taking down heli Ukrainians have been taking down helicopters and jets. Video of the aftermath of a failed river crossing near Bilaharivka with numerous Russian MTLBs, BMP-1s, BMP-2s, and other vehicles. So here's like an on-the-ground look of all those vehicles that tried to cross the Donetsk River. There's other equipment on the ground. Vehicles and equipment scattered everywhere. This is what happens when you don't wear your PT belt. Hey, how you doing, Gene? The Russian tank, the Z tank, has evolved into an X tank. <laughs>
So an on the ground look and perspective at this. Again, I watch these clips for the first time with y'all. So I, I try to give a live reaction to them. I don't watch these ahead of time. I compile them before and think, oh, that'd be a good one to go into during the stream, but I don't watch them prior. Dang, a lot of destroyed, lots of destroyed vehicles and equipment. Lots of destroyed, they got uh, sustainment pouches on the ground, got armor, Kevlar on the ground, vests. Charred vehicles. Was a, a MTLB, a BMP1, a BMP2, among others. Completely destroyed. It's looking like based upon the poll results, and I'll do a poll on the YouTube channel this weekend. It's looking like a one hour, well, one hour later, so the 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. time frame might work better for everyone. We have a lot of people just tuning in now. And I, like I said all week this week, I wanted to test the 7 to 9 p.m. time frame. Didn't work out too well. <laughs> Didn't work out the best. The Johnny Depp coverage had more. <laughs> but... I will adjust next week to and see if the 8 p.m. time will work. So just one hour. It's like in between 7 and 9, right there, 8 p.m., right in the middle. So that'd be 8, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. I just do need a couple hours at the end of the night to get some editing done. So that's why I personally can't do the 9 p.m. to 11 anymore. Next clip. The video of a Russian tank targeted by Ukraine's 25th Airborne Brigade. Three people per tank. Thank you, Rocky. Morning streams, I could return to... Well, that's what we do have a, a European audience. I do morning streams, just not for Ukraine. <clears throat> and the only reason is all of the updates from the day don't get finished or compiled until about this time at night. Next clip. Video reportedly showing a Ukrainian Stugna P ATGM strike on a Russian BMP 2. Next, video from Ukraine's 30th Mechanized Brigade showing a failed Russian river crossing reportedly near Jeronivka and the Donetsk Oblast. We'll watch the latest Speak the Truth video. Rob? During the early invasion of the wars, Rob from Speak the Truth was in our live chat. Who was here during that those days? I'll talk about it on my live tonight. Life is interesting, but the when I had to move out of my living situation, that really did hurt me. But it is what it is. I wasn't live for like two weeks. Oof. When you have social media, that is not good.
but I'll be all right. We got the, we got the, <laughs> do they add this effect? The wind whistling of all the destroyed Russian stuff. Ukraine's 30th Mechanized Brigade. I think they've done this one before. If Facebook takes this stream down for the win, dude, I'll be so mad. They had one like this before, the 30th, they're, Ukraine's funny, they have a sense of humor. Ukrainians. <laughs> it's, it's, they add the audio to it. They've, we, I've seen another clip like this, where it's just destroyed Russian vehicles and they add the wind whistling noise. One more time. Wind rights. Are these winds coming from a copyrighted place? Looks like something from the show Z Nation. Z Nation must just be a gravesite of Z Russian trucks. It's supposed to give like the empty desolate effect. Russian BTR reportedly targeted by Ukrainian artillery. You got a picture. Another picture a decapitated Russian T 80 BVM tank in the Donetsk Oblast. The crickets would be effective. Instructive video from Ukraine's 45th Artillery Brigade. Unlike most videos, this one shows how the artillery crew adjusts fire until they strike the Russian mortar position. They had trenches right out the back of their house. Like, look at... This unit's really good at video editing. Hello from Arizona. Hello, Arizona. No way, dude. No way, Facebook. Seriously? Facebook, you better not. Oh, it did it, dude. It did it. Are you, dude? Y'all, y'all were joking? Y'all were joking about the wind? Facebook just blocked the stream. I'm so done with that platform, dude. I'm so done. I haven't played any music all night except for the... I'm so over it.
Well, Facebook's blocked for literally the wind. Yeah, we're joking about it, but they got blocked for copyrighted audio. Video showing paratroopers from Ukraine's 95th Airborne Assault Brigade firing on pyro, pyro run man pads at a target. Get your man pads out. So I can't stop streaming to Facebook. I, I rely on my income from Facebook, so I can't not stream to there. We have so many subscribers that support every month to that page. Like without Facebook, I wouldn't be able to afford rent. <laughs> so I need Facebook. So that shit does piss me off as much as it is. It sucks. I need to keep trying. Literally, just the sound of the wind. I haven't played any music until now because Facebook's gone. What's stupid too about Facebook is we fought it and won already. I already fought it and won. How do I make it bigger? The rights owner has released their claim on their video, so we just lost all those viewers on Facebook and for nothing. That's how they that's how stupid they are. They took the stream down for the audio, the wind. They did. It was for the wind audio. I'm not kidding. And they just released it, so now the video is public again, but it doesn't matter because all those viewers are gone in the stream. God, I can't stand Facebook. Dude. All right, one more time on this one. Video showing paratroopers from Ukraine's 95th Airborne Assault Brigade firing pyro run man pads at a target. I don't, let's actually move on. We've watched this a few times. I'm frustrated. Crowdfunded gear sent to Russian troops in the Kharkiv Oblast, including DJI, Mavic 2, chainsaws, and generators. So here's more of the Russian equipment that's being sent from crowdfunding. Some of the equipment that the Russians are getting. Looks like straight from Amazon. Is that a saw? Hold on. I got a saw, a tent, some camo netting, a machete in the back, got a, a cooler. Interesting. Here's another. Here's another picture. Here's that. See. Here's that drone. I want the three. And here's another picture of all the equipment getting crowdfunded. All right, continuing on, video of DNR artillery strikes on Ukrainian tanks.
next. That's it, y'all. Oh, we do have a new one. Video of Ukrainian UAV dropping munitions. All right. All right. Hey, that's going to be the last update for today. Here's the update on the map one more time for the anybody that hasn't joined us. We've been live for over two hours now. All right. Am I good now? Is the video good? Oh, yeah. I can play music on YouTube. YouTube, it's fine. Facebook's done. Facebook's shut down. So we're good to go here. We love the daylight too. But all right, y'all. Hey, thanks for tuning in for these past couple hours. We've been live all day today. Please join us on Snack Squad TV tonight. I'm going to be live, finish, or continuing to edit my report from Southwest Minnesota. We had about 50 people tuned in last night late with us. But I will be live doing a Q&A. The video is already scheduled on Snack Squad TV, so just head over to the channel. It should pop up right after the stream's over. All right, I'll be live here. Snack Squad TV, finishing my report. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for all the support. I wouldn't be able to do it without the viewers. This is a 100% viewer-funded stream, viewer-supported stream. I don't have any sponsors. I earn my living from the viewers and you guys tuning in each and every day. All right? So as annoying as Facebook is, I need it because there's so many people that support there and tune in there. And yeah, that is a huge part of my income so i do need facebook back i'll be trying to figure out exactly what i can do if i just play no audio at all but that was so dumb they cut my stream i'm annoyed <laughs> i'm gonna go have a safety meeting and then i'll be back on snack squad tv i'll be live tomorrow at 1 p.m central time fridays at 1 p.m got it fridays at 1 p.m that'll never change i will never change that because friday nights i have softball and, and etc. And I will be streaming our softball games on Snack Squad TV. And here's a final note too for those that are interested. Um, this is another reason for you to subscribe to Snack Squad TV. We're going to be playing in a fundraiser tournament for Stomp Out Suicide Organization that is now held by Canvas Health from Stillwater, Minnesota. The organization started by the Haynes family who lost their daughter, Alyssa Haynes, who was 15 years old unexpectedly. They made this organization to help share the awareness of suicide and become a place for families that have lost someone to suicide. All the expenses will be going to the Stomp Out Suicide Organization. And I'll be raising money during these streams to help this cause. And if our team does win, the money that we win will donate right, all that money will go right towards this organization from from Canvas Health in Stillwater, Minnesota. So look for that. We're going to be playing in a charity benefit tournament this weekend on Snack Squad TV. I hope to see you guys all in the chat. I hope to see you guys tomorrow afternoon for the Ukraine war update in the afternoon. See you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for everybody that subscribed. Thank you for all the members. Thank you to everybody that likes the video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful night and take care. Thank you.